in the world, isn't there? And we are constantly experiencing new things. So we are told that terrorism is new, but it's really not. History teaches us that it's been around, around for ages. So we are bombarded with advertisements for things new, things that will satisfy old desires, like new shampoos, new laxatives, new products to make us feel, well, new. But in the gospel today, we hear of something that is truly new. Indeed, this short passage from John is very rich in new newness. Christ says, I give you a new commandment. Love one another. And we ask, is this really new? Didn't the Old Testament also teach the importance of loving others? Mark's gospel records Jesus himself expressing the great commandment in these words. The first is, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second one is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. So the newness of the commandment must be found somewhere else. Perhaps the newness is explained in Jesus' further words. He says, as I have loved you, so you should love one another. How did Jesus love? He loved by going beyond himself, by loving others more than he loved even himself. So this would seem to be a more radical understanding of love than what we have heard before. It is more intense expression of love that love your neighbor as yourself, since Jesus seems to be saying, love your neighbor more than yourself. But after all, Jesus loved everyone, his followers, his accusers, his torturers, his executioners, more than he loved even himself. So the new commandment to love in this intensified way seems to be the same standard articulated by Jesus throughout his ministry. Did he not instruct his followers to turn the other cheek, to love one's enemies? And even the one who was not present to hear these words, and we know who that is, Judas, who had left to set in motion the events leading to Calvary, must have known this new commandment. Surely Judas knew that Jesus loved him more and he loved himself. So this intensification of love has some claim to being new, but the real basis for newness is found in the covenant relationship Jesus now establishes with his followers. In this new covenant, Jesus is the source of love the love that comes to those who share in the new covenant comes down from Jesus laying down his life for his disciples and those who come after him. They will share in the love of God, the Father, for his only son, Jesus. And by sharing in that love, they will be a sign to the world. So we are all heirs to that new covenant. And that sign that signifies our new covenant relationship is love. So in this gospel message, 
This passage, it is love among Christians that Jesus is concerned about, not love for the world at large. So every covenant in salvation history has been distinguished by a sign. God gave Noah the rainbow, to Abraham circumcision, to Moses the law or the Ten Commandments, in particular, the observance of the Sabbath. So we people of the new covenant are also known by a sign, not a visible sign, not a physical mark, not a ritual sign, the sign that followers of Christ are to bear, the sign which they always are to be recognized is love. Jesus says, this is how all I will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. And so we must ask ourselves on this fifth Sunday of Easter, does the world plainly see us as people of the new covenant? Can it be said of us what was said of the early Christian community? See how much they love one another? If we have doubts how obvious the sign of love is in our community, then perhaps we need to reflect more on how Jesus loved. The commandment to love given by Jesus is a proactive attitude towards others. It is a loving that does not nurse old wounds, old hurts, old gripes, and complaints. How would we be able to love in this way? We need the help of the Holy Spirit. It is only through that grace that are empowered to love others as Jesus loves us. So we need help to live as he should. As we read in the Acts of the Apostles in this Easter season, we see how the Holy Spirit gave powerful life and renewal to the early church. He also brought love and unity to the assembly of believers. If we want to love as Jesus loved, we need to surrender to his new life and invite the Holy Spirit to transform us. The Holy Spirit can help us turn away from selfishness and learn to sacrifice for others. The Holy Spirit can adjust our values so that people are more important than possessions or wealth. Jesus saves us so that we can change. The Holy Spirit is his gift to us so we can live according to his commandment to love. Jesus tells us that this is the very sign, the very sign that we are his disciples, that we love one another. We proclaim in this holy season of Easter that Jesus is risen from the dead. In lives marked by love, we are the signs that is, it is true. Amen.